Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to whitelist an IP address to control access to your API gateway endpoint. Using this method, only the machines with a set of IP addresses that we specify will be able to access our API. Now before I show you how to do this in the API gateway section of the console, I just want to show you our starting state here. So I took the liberty of pre-creating a Lambda function. I'm just going to head over to the Lambda section and show you that really quick. Uh, this Lambda function does something very basic. It's just called dog processor and it's hard coded to return a uh, fixed response here that you can see is just a dog, a breed and a color. Um, so we are going to use this Lambda function as our backend for our API gateway endpoint. So let's head over to the API gateway section and I want to show you how to create a very basic API and then add an IP whitelist to it. Um, so I went to API Gateway. I already have one that already exists here, but I'm going to actually create one from scratch really quick. Uh, top right for Create API. We're going to be using a REST API here. So it's this bottom left one. Uh, go ahead and click on Build. And OK. And so th this is kind of a wizard that they, they walk you through here. I don't really want to do this. So I'm just going to say New API. Uh, and I'm going to call mine the uh, Dogs API. I don't know. You can name this whatever you want. Leave everything as default here and go ahead and click on Create API in the bottom right. So this is the default screen after creating it. So we need to do a couple things. We need to create a resource. I'm going to use Dogs for this example. Uh, so let's say Create a Resource. And I'm going to name my resource name dogs here. And you can see our path is going to be slash dogs. So you can go ahead and click on create resource now. And now we need to create a get API under the dogs resource. So with the dogs resource selected, go ahead and click on actions and then create method. And then we are going to create a get method. I'm going to click on the checkbox here. And OK, cool. So now it's asking us what do we want to wire up this API gateway endpoint to. So pre-selected is Lambda function and that happens to be what we want. Uh, in the next section here for Lambda region, make sure that you select the same region that you created uh, that Lambda function in. So I did mine in US East 1. You can check your region over on the top right here just by looking at the text here. So you can see we are in US East 1. Now my Lambda function was called dog processor, so it's got autocomplete, so it just fills that in for you. Uh, so once you have that all selected, go ahead and click on Save, click on OK. And now this thing should be created. OK, great. So that's not it for actually creating it. We also need to deploy it. Uh, so let's go to, again, actions with the get API selected. Go ahead and click on deploy API here. Now, since this is the first time we did this, we want to go to new stage. We're going to call this stage test. You can call it development or beta or whatever the heck you want. Uh, go ahead and click on deploy. And now you can see we have a URL that our dogs API is going to be hosted on uh, and slash test for the test stage. So if you open this now, I'm just going to right click it and go to open in a new tab. I'm going to pull up that tab here. You can see um, by default, we visited that URL and it says missing authentication token. So we actually need to add slash dogs here uh, to give it the path. And you can see now it's invoking our Lambda function and it's returning that JSON that says breed Jack Russell and color white. OK, perfect. So this is a great starting state. Uh, unfortunately, right now, everyone has access to this API gateway endpoint. So we want to restrict it to just me, just my IP address. So how do we go about doing that? All right, so let's go back to API Gateway. And I'm going to go over on the left hand side here where it says resource policy. Now, resource policy is a section where once you click on this, you can add in a IAM policy and add conditions as to who is allowed and not allowed to access our endpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and click this. And you can see here, take the time to, to read this text if you want, but it's basically what I just described to you. And what I want to do is just grab a uh, policy that I already have created over here and paste it in. And then uh, I want to explain to you what this means really quick. First of all, if you don't know what any of this is, like what IAM is, you probably want to go watch my IAM core concepts video. I'll leave a link uh, down in the comments and in the description section. But essentially what's happening with this top statement is that this is kind of our base case, this top statement, and this is going to be the actual control for the IP whitelist. So let's talk about the top part here. So we can see the effect is allow. The principle is star, which means that this applies to any user. Uh, you can also put in like a specific IAM user here if you want to specify who the individual is. And then we are saying the action is execute API invoke. 
Um, and then we're also specifying the resource. Now, I also put star here. So this means that if I had more than one resource, like something in addition to dogs, then this policy would apply to all. But you can actually specify the ARN of a particular resource if you just want to narrow it down to a particular resource, stage, and API type combination. But I just have it as global for this example. So this is our base case that everyone's going to run into. By default, it's going to have everyone enabled. Now, what's interesting is how this is set up down here. And this is the actual IP whitelist. So you can see here our effect is deny. And again, our principle is star. Again, our action is execute API invoke. And resource is star as well. So nothing really changed here. Um, but what did change is we have this condition down here. And what this is saying is... Um, conditions are kind of like context in which a policy is applied. So what this condition in particular is saying using the not IP address uh, operator is saying deny everyone that is not this particular address 1.2.3.4. That's kind of a double negative and it's a little bit confusing. But what it really means if you just flip that around is you are allowing people with this address right? And only this address. So you are excluding everyone else that doesn't have this address. It's a little bit of a tongue twister and a little bit hard to wrap your head around, but maybe think about it for a moment and you'll probably get it. But essentially all you need to know is using not IP address and putting an IP address here combined with the deny will make this an IP whitelist. So what we can do is just leave this as what I have here for now, uh, which is one, two, three, four. Now, if I go to the bottom right here and save this, so after clicking on save, you need to go ahead and redeploy your API gateway endpoint. So go back to resources. Uh, we're going to click on get again and then go ahead and click on actions and go to deploy API. We're going to go to test, click on deploy again. And you can see here we have this URL again. Now I did notice like if I click this right away, I don't think it works uh, immediately. I've seen that it takes sometimes up to a couple minutes, like two to three minutes for um, the resource policy to be reflected. I'm not sure why it takes so long, um, but let's just try it again really quick right now and see if it updated already. So I just opened that in a new tab. Okay, I'm gonna go to slash dogs again, and we should see some kind of error here. So yeah, it hasn't updated yet. So I'm just gonna keep on refreshing this until uh, API Gateway updates the endpoint. All right, so you can see here just after a few seconds, I clicked on refresh again, and you can see now that user anonymous is not authorized to perform execute API invoke on our resource name. So this is perfect. This is what happens if you are not in the IP whitelist. So let's go back to that API gateway resource policy um, over here. And let's put in my IP address now. So um, in order to get your IP address, there's a lot of uh, websites where you can go, but the one that I use is one called whatismyip.com. And you just come here and it tells you your IP address. So I'm gonna copy this to my clipboard really quick. And we are gonna go back into API Gateway. And I'm going to replace the source IP with my IP address. Uh, one thing that I think I forgot to mention here is that although it says source IP, you can have an array here, so many results if you want. Um, so you can have a, like, you know, a whole bunch of IP addresses that you whitelist. You can also whitelist an entire CIDR block if you want a larger range of uh, IP addresses in one line. Uh, so that's also an option as well. So like what I meant is that this can be an array here. Uh, so you can have a list and this will work the exact same way. So go ahead and click on save again in the bottom right. That's great. And again, we need to go and redeploy. So I'm going back to resources, scrolling up, get. Uh, we're going to go to deploy API, go to test. OK, click on deploy. And there's our URL again. I'm just going to wait a minute or so until this updates, and then I'll try to hit the URL again. All right, guys, for some reason, this took a really long time to update. It actually took almost 10 minutes for everything to get reflected. Uh, so now you can see here, if I try to open this URL again, and we go ahead and put slash dogs again, uh, we should see that our Lambda is now being invoked because we are on the resource policy whitelist. So if you like this video, check out the other ones on the right on API Gateway, and don't forget to like and subscribe.